Hey everyone and welcome to another Warframe video. Today we're actually going to try and not be in combat and take a look at our brand spanking new frame and that is Baruch. So the idea as I sort of hinted there is that Baruch is supposed to be the master of not being in combat. He doesn't want to kill where he doesn't have to. Which is why you have this restraint meter down in the bottom right. What that basically is, is his uh, with his passive, every projectile you dodge with a lewd, enemy you put to sleep with lull, and uh, enemy you disarm with desolate hands, feeds into that restraint meter. As that restraint meter sort of goes down, he gets more damage reduction, but also use that as energy for your fourth ability, which is sort of exalted fists. And you use that rather than, like I say, rather than energy. The rest of his abilities, though, are very, very much about not being in combat. So let's take a look at Elude. Elude, basically, and there's a reason I don't have invincibility on, despite having a whole bunch of 160s here, is that provided you're not in combat, you uh, you can't be damaged at all. You can be damaged by st uh, stuff that has AoE attacks, which is why I don't have any bombards. Um, bombards will still, like, insta-kill you, but as you can see... I cannot take any damage here, and that's actually the, pretty much the sum of this ability. Uh, it, as long as you're like not in combat, you can't take any damage whatsoever. As soon as I start uh, firing, there you go, I took damage immediately, uh, there you go, I died. So if you're running and gunning a lot, you're not actually going to get anything out of this ability. So it definitely is going to rely on, as, as, as the theme of the Warframe is, not being in combat. So let's bring that up again. So now I'm not in combat, I cannot be damaged. As you can see there though, the knockdown, if I can get another one to knock down, there you go. I can still be knocked down um, and also uh, affected by like AoE abilities as well, which is why I don't have that. However, the second ability is pretty much just as simple. You cast it and everything in a certain range will slowly fall asleep. When they're actually asleep, it opens them up to finishes. So you can just uh, bring a really quick dagger. This is my my Zor dagger that I'm using. There you go. Let's put him to sleep. As you can see, very, very, very slowly falling asleep. There you go. And it has a pretty decent duration on it. Um, I'm going to wait for these guys to wake up. Because when they actually wake up, they also are sort of like disoriented for a short amount of time. Or they should have been. They apparently don't. No, apparently that didn't work there. But when they when they wake up, they're actually supposed to be like disoriented for a certain amount of time. So that helps a little bit with... Uh, that was under the floor. Uh, it helps a little bit with um, just like that extra couple of seconds of uh, crowd control. Hey, now I'm broken. Cool, I'm broken. Uh, help. Help. Um... Uh, here I'm back, and I'm back after those technical difficulties. Sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna move on to his three nail, which is called Desolate Hands. Basically, what that does is it summons like a ring of uh, knives around you, but each one of these counts as damage reduction as well as um, as a disarm charge. So what I'm going to do now, spawn some enemies. I'm going to go into a loot because I'm not in combat still, even with these out. Like, even when these fire off, they uh, don't count you as in combat. So now every single one of these melee uh, enemies is now a melee enemy, which is really, really nice. Good thing about this is you can recast it. So whilst the damage reduction on um, Nova's 1 doesn't really, uh, well, isn't recastable, this one is, which is very, very nice. And all of these knives will also do a small AoE explosion whenever they fire off as well, which is pretty damn useful. When you've got a lewd up, um, the actual range of these things doubles as well, which is very, very nice. Now we can pick all these guys off, because I need to build my restraint meter up. Again, it's not a particularly difficult to like understand ability. Um, the damage reduction from having these up is 90% as well, which is really, really sweet. Well, it's like 80% base, and then, like, obviously with just, like, an in, um, an intensify or even an auger secret or something like that, you're gonna be at max, so it's really, really not hard to get these things up to 90% damage reduction, which, when you've got your restraint meter going as well, is really, really good damage reduction, especially when you've got a loot up, too. 
Yeah, this thing, like Baruch, it really is the uh, the king of damage reduction, to be perfectly honest with you. And then we've got Desert Wind, which is his Exalted Fists. In terms of how I decided to mod these, because it's an Exalted weapon, um, stuff like Drifting Contact doesn't work. So I went with a crit build, 94% crit, prime pressure point, condition overload, berserker, sacrificial steel in here for crit chance because blood rush doesn't work either. It's got no status at all, so prime fever strike and shocking touch for the um, for corrosive damage, organ shatter for crit damage, and gladiator might because the extra crit damage is really really nice. The stacking stuff doesn't work, however, the actual base thing of the crit damage definitely does. And then we've got Serene Storm, which is our um, sort of combo. I will try and do some of these combos. I'm really, like, really, really bad at combos. So we've got Father's Lesson, which is just E E E. So let's. We actually reset our uh, restraint meter here. So let's go and pick up some restraint quickly. Let's go build that up, because you can actually build this up reasonably quickly. There we go. Just pick all these off. Just clear out the uh, thing and grab some of them. There we go. Right. So, casting four. E, E, E combo. And as you can see, that actually really has... Uh, let's de let's uncast that very, very quickly. Right, let's, let's build up a little bit more restraint. Or, like, erosion of restraint, sorry. It's quite easy to build this up. Like, you just... The more damage you sort of re um, avoid, it actually builds it up really, really quickly. So, as you can see right here, it is building up very, very quickly. I just want to try and uh, pick it up as, you know, get it up as high as, uh, as possible here. Um, they're all melee enemies now, which actually didn't help. It's actually not help matters. So, we're just going to put them to sleep for the extra... For the extra charge. There we go. Cool. So, there we go. Pick them all off. Right, we're going to go back in again. And this time we're actually going to melee them with the standard E combo. It's a lot of... Uh, there's actually a lot of, like, crowd control with these. There we go. This is the standard E. Look at the range on that. And also look at the knockdown. Oh. So, we're actually in combat right now, so... There we go. Just look at the look at the range on that. I, I am modded. Whoops. Because I'm in combat, I can't... Uh, I haven't got a loot, so... I uh, completely forgot to... Oh, and then my st restraint retards just reset. Dang it, man. Let's go and grab some more, uh, more restraint. Or erosion of restraint, sorry. Let's have these... Got can you fire at me, please? Hello? Guys, fire at me. All right, cool. At least this one's firing at me. One one can fire at any one point. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's going well. All right, we got our restraint back again. Cool. So yeah, as you can see, it, like this doesn't make you, it doesn't make you god mode at all, especially if you're actually using your four. So let's get my uh, damage reduction up. Let's bring these back. All right, standard E combo again. As you can see, that's your standard E combo. So the next one was uh, melee combos. So it's trespass denied, which is you're holding up as well. Whoops. That's the uh, holding combo. It's a good bit of... Uh, there's a, there's a really good amount of crowd control like in this as well because as you can see like the range is brilliant there's a lot of knockdowns the damage isn't incredible like in my opinion i i am not blown away by the damage on this like these obviously are high level enemies so if we drop them a little bit then it might be more effective but i'm not massively blown away by it um, the next one is the cold, the hold combo, which was E, whoops, four, which was E, hold. I am bad at combos, so, hang on a minute, 
So yeah, E, hold E, and then lots of E's. I actually don't really know how to do that one for some reason. I am not entirely sure why. Oh, I think I did it there. Hang on. Well, I'm bad. Basically, what we've learned there is I'm bad at melee combos, which is not exactly much of a surprise. But honestly, that one you're never going to use in combat anyway, because, I mean, even in the simulacrum, I've just shown how difficult it is to pull it off. So, yeah. Let's put that up. And the, the other one is the right kick cold combo, which is really, really good and actually has a really nice pull in it. So, it actually groups the enemies up for you. Really, really nice. And then you can just boot them away with another foot, which is super cool. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about, like, bringing them close and then... And then kicking them away again, because obviously you don't really want to kick them away as melee, but... I guess the idea is not really to kill them, because, you know... his his entire The entire point of him is not to kill, so... Yeah. There's also... A really, really good AoE ground slam, which is incredible. The range on that is insane when you got it modded for range. So, yep, that's also a thing. And slide attack also does uh, this too. It like lifts them up into the air, which is really, really cool. They're just like, wee, floating in the air. So, and he's gone to Mars. Bye. It's going to see Elon Musk. Goodbye. So the one, the one way I do think this has a lot of potential is uh, let's build up the restraint meter a little bit more again because we've uh, let it drop a little bit. I am um, is by combining. So basically, you can combine your one, your two, and your four. So I'm I've got my damage reduction up right now. These are all one sixties. They're now disarmed because of my three. I'll bring my uh, three back up again. But now what you can do is four. To bring them all up. And if you don't have a dagger... Oh, sorry. That was three to... Uh, two to put them all to sleep. You cast your four. And... Yeah. This is how you do it. This is an insta-kill. This is not... If, these aren't daggers. Like, I do have a dagger equipped. Um, I don't think it's taking from the covert lethality. But yeah. It's a... Basically, once you use your four and your... Um, and your two, it becomes one of the best scaling damage abilities in the game. <laughs> It's it does a stupid amount of damage, as you can see though. Lots of uh, the energy drain is quite high. That's the one downside I think Baruch has is he is very like energy heavy. Let's bring my restraint back up again. So I got my exalted fists out and boop. So yeah, now they're all dying. Hey, that, there's the stun that I was talking about earlier. That it didn't happen earlier, and it did then. So, and I just launched him over the. Go away! <laughs> Go to Mars. And that's pretty much his move set in a uh, in a nutshell, to be honest. Modding wise, I decided to go with uh, sort of a mixture of everything, but really max out on the strength. So the uh, the thing about his elude, his first ability, is it is actually based on angle, and that can be modded with range mods. So if you put a lot of range on, you get three hundred and sixty degree protection, which is really really nice. Um, the radius of lull fifty five meters is insane. <laughs> That's a huge huge radius. Um, duration isn't great, um, but I, uh, I'd say this is the duration of how long it takes them to get, um, to get slept. And the sleep duration is 25 seconds, which is pretty decent and gives you a decent amount of time to go put them all to sleep. Um, desolate hands, all the charges, the number of charges affected by power strength, the explosion radius by range, the area damage by strength mods, and so is the damage reduction. And the radius is obviously, um increase with range mods as well and the damage of serene storm by power strength and so is the damage reduction so i decided to go with mostly range because it does mean that you get insane range on the sleep and you also get really really good um crowd control from his four as well so yeah corrosive projection i've got coaction drift up here i could probably honestly switch that out with um handspring 
uh, and probably should, bearing in mind how often I was getting knocked down there, uh, which is over here. So switch that out. I've got August, uh, August Secrets and Umbral Intensify right now for Power Strength as well as Transient Fortitude. Um, but that's because we're running Overextended and the Augur Reach for a decent amount of range. Streamline just to make things a little bit cheaper. Prime Continuity for Duration. And I've got a Vitality here for Health. What I'm probably going to end up doing is I'm going to go for an um a full Umbral build. I've only put this in here because Umbral Intensify is better than normal Intensify. So... Yeah, I'm probably going to put another V and a dash in, in terms of polarities, and then change this out for a an Umbral Intensify. So that'll increase, uh, sorry, Umbral Vitality. Give him more health, and it will give him more power strength as well. Now the damage reduction, it is important to note, it does actually work on all of him, so it works on his shields as well as his um, armor. So it definitely is important to work, uh, sorry, shields and health. So it's important to note that as well. I did mess around with like a, a, a figure build. But I wasn't. This this was the build that I ended up being really really happy with. Arcane wise. Uh, energize. Just to help keep things going more often. And because you can reliably pull off um, finishes. I would actually go with an arcane ultimatum. And or. and Well I say and. Uh, arcane ultimatum for armor. Or arcane trickery for invisibility. This uh, the trickery build can be really really good if like if you get lucky and you proc it, so that can be really 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 strong. But it's uh, definitely going to be sort of down to personal preference on that one. And um, his melee weapon, I've got a, a, this is only an unranked Zor. This is one that I I put you know brand new. Uh, I haven't even like gilded it yet. Absolutely brand spanking new. But because it's a dagger, you only need covert lethality and prime fury anyway. Um, especially since the Desert Wind, his fists, is actually a completely separate thing. So, yeah. I would combine also his Zor with the Arcane that increases, or, or gives you life steal on Finisher as well. Um, just for that extra little bit of uh, survivability. So going with a Zor Dagger for his melee weapon, or a Zor in general, is absolutely the way to go with him. Because you get that little bit of extra life steal if you need it. So with all that said and done, what do I think of Baruch? Do I think he's any good? And will I be using him going forward? Well, in the in the whole, is he good? Yes, yes he is. He is very, very good. Like, a, a frame that can just basically stay out of combat and just sleep everything that uh, moves. Like, the, he has some insane scalability. Like, in terms of long runs and, um, like, endurance runs... Having a Baruch in there, combined with um, like a con like, not condition overload, a um, covert lethality dagger or something, means that honestly, a squad with a good Baruch could actually pretty much go indefinitely. But the thing is, like he's not designed to be a frontline damage dealer. He is designed to support the rest of the team, and that like is. It's weird, like it doesn't suit my playstyle, which honestly is the reason why I don't think I'll be playing him very often. Because honestly, I uh, I like my guns too much, and if you if you use your guns too much on Baruch, you get absolutely no like benefit from his one whatsoever. So yeah, and he is ridiculously squishy. Like he is so squishy. Like as soon as uh, as soon as you attack, you've got to be sure you know what you're doing and. At doing it right because if you attack and you get it wrong yeah more often than not you're actually gonna die so yeah but look look at the like huge group of enemies I just set to put to sleep and then just carved through using my uh, finisher damage but at the same time I also picked up a, uh, a toxin proc from that uh, Nox so it really is a very it, it definitely is risk reward because at higher level you could like you get it wrong you're dead you're going to die at higher level. And that is actually kind of interesting. Like, the the brief for this uh, frame, obviously, was um, to make a frame that is stronger if it stays out of combat. And honestly, they've done it. Like, they, they absolutely nailed that. Because if you're in combat, you've got to, like I say, you've got to make that decision as to, to when you actually want to effectively break into the combat 
It's it's very cleverly done, like really cleverly done. I uh, don't know why that went so far though, but hey, um, it it's so clever, like it's very very clever, and it it, it just doesn't suit my style of play, like. Like I say, he has one of the best... Honestly, he's got one of the best scaling kits in the game. Like, it really does scale very, very well. Because, obviously, like, putting everything to sleep in a huge radius like he does, just... Yeah, it, it, it means it's going to scale infinitely. Because covert lethality is a thing, and because of how broken that is. And, yeah. Being completely immune to damage provided you're out of combat... Like, obviously, you've got to be able to keep your energy up, um, as you can see. Like, I have had a, a couple of issues getting my energy up. In fact, I'm about to run out of energy now. Like, he is insanely energy hungry. And obviously, once you're out of energy, you start becoming very, very fragile and very, um, very vulnerable. Because he doesn't, like, he doesn't really take a hit. Thankfully, I've got a Trinity in my squad, so... Every now and again, when I, like, run out of energy, I uh, am able to get it back. But uh, even, like, even his fists, which I'm now, like, going to bring up, like, the damage is actually pretty damn good. Like, it's not... Yeah, it, it, it's it's strong enough where it's actually really useful. There you go. We're, we're, we're kicking ass right now with, uh, with my fists. And it doesn't cost any energy either. This is the thing. Like, no energy whatsoever. And just look at the range. The range on it is absolutely brilliant. I don't know. It, while Baruch does not suit my playstyle, he is absolutely a fantastic frame. He is, like, insanely good. Like, his the clear that he can pull off with his... Uh, while you've got his four running, it's just... He is absolutely brilliant. But, uh, yeah. Like, not, ev not everything... Or not every frame suits everyone's playstyle, and... Realistically, I don't think I'm going to play him very often. I really don't think I will. Which is a bit of a shame, I have to admit. However, you know, choice is a good thing. And I like that. I think those that uh, have a more balanced, um, a not slower, but a more careful playstyle, might actually get more out of him than I do. I'm, t I'm too aggressive a player. Like, I, I've always been a very aggressive player. Like, I like to be attacking all of the time. Like, I I don't like stopping. I don't like not attacking. So, more often than not, that leads me into situations where I really shouldn't be attacking, but I do and I die for it. And that's not how you play Baruch. You've got to make that informed decision as to when, when to break into the combat effectively. But if you can manage that and you can master that, like, he is insanely strong. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely insanely strong. So my restraint meter's at max, and we're going to bring out the fists. It's just, like, the damage output of this thing is pretty silly. It really is super silly. Just look at the damage. And look at the range as well. Like, look at the range that I'm uh, pushing, like, putting things out at. And these, are, these guys are not... Like they're level 66, so they're not super high level, and obviously they're unarmored as well because it's Corpus. But I, the last guys were were Grenier, so yeah, it's... I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below as to uh, what you think of Baruch and, and uh, whether you like him or not. Like, I think he's going to be a very... He's going to be a Marmite frame, I think is the uh, the phrase, which is you either love him or you hate him. I personally am not a big fan uh, because it doesn't suit my playstyle. However, I think those, I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of fun with him. But yeah, like I say, let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, my weird ramblings. I think I've probably rambled quite a bit during this, uh, during the end of this video. But yeah, I I really thank you all for watching the support on the last like the last bunch of videos have been absolutely incredible i uh i really really thank you all but for now i thank you all for watching and i shall catch you in the next video cheers everyone bye bye